Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrain summary and cast list analysis video. So I know I have not uploaded in like a week. Uh, I was gonna do my episode 62 review on Wednesday like I normally do, and then I just really wasn't feeling it, and I tried to do it the rest of the week, and I never really got my motivation to do it. So I do apologize about the, the lack of videos. Again, uploading is going to be kind of sporadic for the near future, and I do apologize for that, but I do have have a few videos that I've been scripting that I've been working on and I am hoping that maybe tomorrow I will upload like a dual review where I'll be able to upload an episode 60 or episode 61 excuse me episode 62 hasn't even aired yet uh, episode 61's review maybe tomorrow along with episode 62's review tomorrow as well so I'm again I'm hoping for kind of like a a back-to-back -back, uh, episode review uploading day tomorrow which hopefully I'll be able to do uh, so I do apologize for again just the complete lack of videos for the month of July. I, I promise that in the month of August, things will get better and more consistent like they originally were with my uploading schedule. But we do have some exciting summaries, a very small summaries, and an exciting cast list to go over. Again, tomorrow's episode is 62. We have the cast for episode 63 and very, and I mean very small summaries for 64 and 65. I'm sure within the next week, we will get much longer summaries for both of those episodes and probably even for episode uh, maybe 67 as well, but or 66 and 67. But anyway, big thank you to DMC for translating. I will link it down below in case you want to read these yourselves, and let's get into it. Also, before I begin, the July pack opening that I did, uh, Relentless Revenge, I will be doing the giveaway at the end of the 62 review, which again should be out tomorrow. So definitely, uh, if you enter that giveaway, make sure if you don't want to watch the review, just skip to the end at least and uh, check out the uh, who wins that giveaway. And Patreon looks like it will be saying above the threshold, so we will be doing another giveaway in August. And I also have a very exciting giveaway related to San Diego Comic Con. I know that already passed, but that will hopefully come out this week as well. So a bunch of giveaways on this channel, which I'm really excited about because it's a chance for me to give back to you guys. But anyway, let's get started. Episode 63 is going to be called Transmigrating Flames. It will be part two of the Blood Shepherd Soulburner duel. Blood Shepherd has searched through Soulburner's memories and discovered his weakness. Blood Shepherd then uses his vicious drone combo to overwhelm Soulburner and drive him into a corner. Can Soulburner overcome his weakness and win this duel? Dot, 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 question mark, exclamation mark. So the cast list is Yusaku slash Playmaker, I, Soulburner, Flame, Kusanagi, Kenjo slash Blood Shepherd, Emma slash Ghost Girl, Yorozaka, Mizunuma, Ryojiro, and Young Takeru. I know those, uh, the third and second last names I probably butchered. I do apologize for that. And we don't even really need to speculate, honestly, guys, if... Soulburner is going to win this duel or not because we can just take a look at the 64 and 65 summaries and the episode 64 summary is called or the episode 64 title I should say is called Turning Point. Takeru and Yusaku head to where Kusanagi is but dot 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 and then episode 65 Dawn of Playmaker Kusanagi talks about Playmaker's origin. So honestly, those two episodes seem awesome, and I'm a little upset that we have to wait two weeks to get to those two episodes, because, well, first of all, let me talk about the duel that's going on between Soulburner and Blood Shepherd. I, I haven't given my thoughts on what I thought of 61, which was a complete uh, Takeru backstory. It wasn't really a Soulburner backstory. It was more a Takeru and, and Flame backstory, and I did like the episode a lot. Uh, the one thing that I'm not too fond of is... As Blood Shepherd, just like Bowman, is a character that was introduced to us in episode 47, I believe, you know, when season two started, and already they have two losses, both of them have two losses under their belt, and Soulburner and Playmaker continue to just run absolute roughshod through every single season two character, through really every character, I mean, I mean, Blood uh, Soulburner is now going to have beaten Blood Shepherd, he's going to have beaten, well, Bitten Boot, I, I'm not really counting them as, as, you know, skilled duelists. He's going to have beaten Blue Girl, Owie's Eyes, and, and Go. He's literally beaten every single character. The, like, I feel like he's going to beat Revolver next, the, the way things are going, even though I feel like Revolver versus Soulburner, that could be the real matchup if that ever happens, where Revolver, where Soulburner finally does lose and Revolver gets a really, really badass win. But uh, the other interesting thing is the Knights were brought up in episode 60, or episode 59, excuse me, and 
we're now six episodes into the future, and unless the Knights maybe are going to be in episode 64, and that's what that but means at the end, we're going to be another maybe two months before we actually see the Knights do anything. So it's cool that they introduce them, but clearly the writers are taking their time before actually integrating them in this plot, in this story, which I don't really mind. I always felt that the Knights were going to kind of come back maybe at like the late 60s, early 70s, and even though we did get them in episode 59, they're still waiting to kind of formally introduce them, which I don't really mind. I thought maybe 20 episodes without the Knights, which episode 66 will mark 20 episodes, that seemed about right to me, but hopefully they do come back in because really everyone in the Knights of Hanoi, I find is a very fascinating and interesting character, and I think people in the Knights, Revolver and Spectre, those are two characters that at least have a chance to beat Soulburner. I thought maybe they were going to do some plot twist of Blood Shepherd winning here, uh, just because I want to see a curveball. I mean, you guys know that. I think a lot of people want to see a curveball at this point. The duels, especially in Season 2, have been very, very predictable, so... Blood Shepherd is not going to win here. Uh, clearly, we saw in the episode 62 preview that he's going to use uh, Despair from the Dark. I believe that's the name of the monster, which was the monster that he found is Soulburner's weakness, at least in the flashback, was the weakness. It was the monster that kind of tormented him when he was a kid. But clearly, Soulburner is going to be able to overcome it. Now, let me focus on 64 and 65 here, because 65, first of all, is interesting, because Kusanagi is... I'm I'm not sure. Let me start with this. When I first read 64, I'm gonna I'm, I'm kind of all over the place right now. When I first read 64, I thought, why is Kusanagi in Link Vrains? Like clearly, you know, Soulburner is gonna beat Blood Shepherd, and then in Link Vrains they're gonna go to Kusanagi. But it re- it says to Keru and Yusaku head to where Kusanagi is. So this is gonna be kind of a real life thing. So 64 and 65 could take place in the real world, which is good because I feel like too many things happen in Link Vrains and I'd like to see some more real world episodes. Uh, and I'm not, there's so many things. I mean, it's just such a short freaking summary and it's so vague that I could literally speculate what this, what the line in 64 means for the next 15 minutes, which I'm not going to do. The first thing that came to my mind was finally, here's that betrayal scene that we've been waiting for. I feel like it would kind of be out of place because everyone, especially in episode 61 or 60, right before uh, Soulburner got captured by Blood Shepherd, everyone seemed to be on pretty good terms. There didn't seem to really be any tension. And because 61 and 62 and 63 even are going to be Soulburner, Blood Shepherd, there's not really any room there to build tension around Kusanagi, Yusaku, and Takeru even. So I don't think that's going to be the case where that scene in opening two of Kusanagi seemingly betraying Yusaku or, or losing faith in Yusaku, whatever you want to make of that opening two scene, I don't think it's going to play out here. Uh, especially because in episode 65, Kusanagi is going to talk about Playmaker's origin. Not Yusaku's origin, but where Yusaku kind of got the inspiration, maybe, to become Playmaker. So episode 65 is going to be a very, very interesting episode, because there's still a lot about our main character that we don't know. Uh, His parents, for instance. We still have no idea if he even has parents. We don't know how Playmaker came to be, like, what inspired him. I mean, obviously, he wanted revenge against the Knights, but you still feel like there's a lot left to be desired with that story. So, 65 is going to be great, especially if if it is what it is, if we're going to get a lot about Playmaker's origin. Maybe something happens to Yusaku in episode 64, similar to what happened to Soulburner in 61, or at the end of 60, and that's why we got Soulburner's story. Something's going to happen to Yusaku, and then we're going to get his origin and Playmaker's origin. Origin, and maybe how Kusanagi and Playmaker met, or Kusanagi and Yusaku met. We still have no idea how they came into contact, so that'll be really interesting. There's still a lot of questions to be asked regarding Yusaku's beginnings, regarding Playmaker's beginnings, and it looks like within the next month, we will finally have answers to those questions. Uh, the other thing in 64 that I initially thought is when Takeru and Yusaku are walking back to the hot dog truck... Uh, Even though, wouldn't they be in the hot dog truck if they leave Link Vrains? Or maybe Kusanagi is somewhere else. When they're walking to go to Kusanagi, maybe they run into Ryokin and Spectre and the knights in the real world. And the knights, even though, probably not, 
because actually, yeah, definitely not, because in 59, Ryokin said, you know, I don't do things that way. Ryokin does not want to I guess scar them in the real world. He says we're gonna let them come into Link Vrains. We deal with those people in Link Vrains. We do not deal with them in the real world. We do not interfere with their actual lives, which I thought was actually a really awesome statement from Ryokin. He could very easily, if he wanted to, go into the real world and ruin these kids' lives even more. But you can still see he feels a little bit of guilt. And when they enter Link Vrains, in his mind, it's fair game, and I respect that. That's completely fine. But if they're in the real world and they're not going to do anything in Link Vrains, let them be. Let's not ruin their lives any more than my father did. And I think that was a very mature and respectful line from Revolver, honestly. That was one of my favorite lines of that episode 59 recap. And that's why I don't think the Knights, unless maybe the Knights attack in Link Vrains, and that's why they don't get to Kusanagi because they have to go into Link Vrains in like some emergency situation to to stop the Knights. Who really knows? There's so many things that can happen in 64 and 65, and I am so excited to talk to you guys. Jeez, I'm out of breath. I've been talking for a while. So excited to talk to you guys about all of your predictions here. Let me know what you think of 99% most likely Blood Shepherd losing. I mean, I'm sure everyone saw it coming, but let me know if that is annoying you, how easily Soulburner has been beating everyone, or if you don't really mind it and, and you think it's setting up for maybe the greater good and a Soulburner loss down the road is just going to be that much more impactful. So please let me know all your thoughts down below. A special thank you to my platinum tier patrons, Alexa Baker, Christopher Johannes Bosca, Glenn McGookin, Jorge Carrillo, D01, James Rose, and Sin Cloud, and to my diamond tier patron, Solid Snack, and Boulder Geist as the month of July ends. I cannot thank you all enough, especially my patrons for sticking with me and supporting me through my absence. I promise you, August, the uploading will be more back to normal. I think I might even try to get into Twitch a little bit and start streaming a couple of days a week. Uh, so I promise you there will be more content from me. And to everyone who's stuck by me, whether you are a patron or whether you are not, it really does mean the world to me. Thank you so much. And I'm so thankful I have literally the greatest support group in the world. I will talk to you down below. Thank you, as always, so much for watching, and thank you for your support. I will see you next time, and I hope you have an amazing day.